Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 250 for Monday, March 30th, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab. Welcome back to Gig Gab. Hope everybody's doing okay. We are, as I said, the show for working musicians, and that definition is ever evolving, it mm. seems. Definitely. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, and here, of course, in Durham, New Hampshire, uh, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in San Jose, California, I miss gigging, is Paul Kent. Yeah, so, that, you know, that is um, a thing. Uh, I didn't, I, well, I mean, I probably realized it, but I sort of ignored it. Uh, I, I mentioned I was in the kind of in the zone with Fling, right? We were doing a lot of recording and our recording has all been been uh, detached, right? You know, I, I do my parts here, Russ does his parts there. And then when we, for every song, somebody is th- sort of the mix master. We send our tracks, that person mixes it, then we master it together and all that stuff. So our current scenario being isolated to our homes for the most part works out fine for that. But I spent two weeks not doing a thing. Every time I'd come in the studio here and walk past my drums, I would like ignore them. I'd sit down and do my podcast. And, um, and it, you know, it started when I started having to like cancel gigs off the calendar. And I understand why, like, I'm not against this. Of course I, you know, I get it. But um, but it put me in a funk, man. And yeah. finally, finally, this weekend, I, I sat down and, and played some uh, played some drums. I recorded uh, actually several tracks for Fling Tunes. Well, in fact, there was there was a thing that that an interesting thing that happened where I wanted to play some of the stuff later in the show that we oh, did. Good. But yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was it's a I'm I'm still bummed about not playing gigs, you know, playing music. For me, such a big part of it is the interaction that happens live, you know, either in the rehearsal room or on stage, you know, wherever, just interacting and communicating with other humans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Singing, playing, all of that. And I'm really kind of like... It hit me harder than than I than I realized. It took me, like I said, it took me a couple of weeks to be like, "Oh, wait a minute! Like I can't just ignore this. I gotta, yeah, yeah." yeah. No, this is. I'll, I'll say it, it's an interesting thing. Um, my wife, you know, I have one daughter in New York and then two daughters in San Francisco, hmm. and uh, you know, my wife, they've been concerned about us, and so my wife wanted to let them know we're okay, and so. She started doing these kind of funny videos and we posted them to Facebook. Yeah. And people seem to really, really like them. And uh, imagine if all this had gone down 20 years ago when there wasn't digital tools and you were truly isolated. Right. Oh, I know. There we're was no, so... no Zoom, no FaceTime, no podcasts. Yeah. No, I, I, I count my blessings every day. Like, I mean, my, yes, we're seeing some, some slowdown in business, but our, I mean, our businesses are, are always virtual. You know, me spending my day alone in my office here is totally normal for me. And uh, it doesn't mean life hasn't changed for me, but man, like the having, simply having something to do that isn't all that much different than what I was doing before is, is huge. And I know how fortunate I am for that. You know, that it just dumb luck. It worked out this way, but um, I would yeah. like to say that, that um, the amount that certainly musicians in my community, I'm sure it's happening everywhere. So everything from these kind of virtual choir um, videos, which I have a question for you about, yeah. um, uh, are just lovely. I just, I, I don't know how many listeners are look at my Facebook page, but there've been two that I've seen. And the last one is actually a bunch of students in Rome and we know how bad it is in Italy right now. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, them singing a Crosby stills and Nash song, helplessly hoping, uh, you know, th- all the live streaming performances. I am so touched by uh, the love that the listeners give the, how, how much that, you know, you talk about how much of a human 
endeavor it is to make music with other people. But, it, you know, we, we remind ourselves it's a human endeavor to consume music, to let it wash over you and, and do what it does. And so just watching how enthusiastic and supportive and happy and, you know, gracious and offering tips and, you know, these types of things that the people who are watching it. And again, some of it is communal. You know, a lot of it is the community that you that you live in and the musicians that you get used to supporting. Sure. Like the stuff that that was on that iHeartRadio special yesterday with the, you know, the the galactic stars Grohl and, and, yeah. and Backstreet Boys. I mean, that's, that's just fantastic. And you get a little humbled. I, I have to say we are, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a little bug can wipe out a large part of the population is a pretty humbling concept, but that humans are figuring out some way to stay human through all this is really, it's a pretty humbling thing. Yeah. makes you feel quite small, you know, that we're just trying to find some ways to stay in touch, express love, express concern, it's really, it's a remarkable thing. And these tools are unbelievable that we have them at this time in history that we can actually go out. I'm going to do two events this week. So okay. I want to tell you about one that the house rockers um, did. So I sent out a note to the house rockers and said, I want to put this thing together. Um, you, is everybody in? And everybody of course was immediately in and everybody's, you know, dealing with stuff in different ways. They have different size families, different situations in life. And we're going to do a streaming event of house rocker content uh, on Tuesday night in California at seven o'clock on Facebook, Facebook live. And then many so, of my friends. So have, how are you? I, I mean, are you doing that remotely from each of your homes or how, like, how's that happening? So the answer is, and I'll reveal a little bit, cause I know I, I have some listeners who are also house rocker fans, yeah. but um, everybody recorded something. Got it. Okay. So you're they sent me a file. Got I it. got my iMovie chops back together and strung them all together. Nice. I downloaded OBS and learned how to, how to stream mostly learned how did a test yesterday and we can kind of talk about. Yeah. All, I want to talk those. about the tech. We promised we would do that, but yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. yeah okay. So, all right, so, so I, you, I strung all these things together, learned, you know, got re re dusted off some very, very fundamental iMovie chops. Yep. Got, got, buzzword compliant with OBS and did a test and it all seemed to work. So that is a, that's going to be essentially pre-recorded content. That's all strung together. And that's awesome. The guys did, the guys did really amazing stuff. I mean, some of it is performance. Some of it is more than performance. Some of it is just a spoken, you know, well wish. Yeah. I think it's going to be nice for people. And then uh, on Thursday night, I'm going to do a solo acoustic show. And uh, um, nice. So, and the, the big note there is, I've been trying to figure out how to get decent quality audio. And again, I don't, I, right, so let, let's, I don't let's know. talk about, let's talk about this because sure. I, I think, I think we, we, because we, we promised we would, right? So let's dig in a little bit for anybody that, that is not entirely clear on some of the things you've already mentioned, right? OBS, uh, really it's OBS studio at OBS project.com. It is a freely available, uh, multi-platform, meaning it's available for, uh, y you know, Mac, Windows, I think even Linux. Right. So everybody can use this app freely available. V the best thing I could call it is a video mixer. Right. It's open broadcaster. It's software. a TV studio. It's yeah. a TV studio in your computer. That's it. And right. you can you can pull in multiple video sources, multiple audio sources and mix them together live. And what's cool is. You can build little scenes. So you spend a little bit of time saying, OK, I want to build a layout that has, you know, my camera here, but maybe my little logo here or a logo with my Venmo here. Or or if if you uh, if you're able to bring in some other content or something or if you haven't, if you have multiple cameras and you want to do a multi cam view, you can lay out a few different things. And then you, it makes it very easy on the fly with one keystroke to switch between these different uh, scenes or, or layouts that you've built. And uh, and, and it, it really is super easy from the standpoint of like this is a very complex thing to do. Yes. They've, they've made it pretty easy. Um, I well, will. You, and you, you, you stopped at the last mile. Right. So not only is it fairly easy to work with multiple sources and create scenes and those types of things. But you really just say, I want to I want to stream this to this service, right. this service or this service. And it just kind of magically happens. Yeah. Now, there well, are not some magically, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. OBS can stream to 
one source, as I've found, I, I haven't found a way to make OBS stream to multiple sources simultaneously. But, it but can, I gave you that site last week, right? Well, yes. And I found another solution. Uh, and, and, I, and neither one is better. But you're right. There's Restream.io, which you send a, an RTSP stream, a real-time streaming protocol stream. It's just an open standard. You blast to them, and then they echo it, uh, restream it to others, right? Um but OBS in and of itself will stream directly to Facebook. Uh, it's got great integration there. It can even link as deep as an event that you have on your profile. So you can really kind of target very, very well there. Uh, it'll also stream to YouTube. I think it's got a couple others. I, you know, I do a couple other podcasts. And when this all started, I'd been wanting to move one of the other ones, especially Mac Geek Gab. I wanted to move that to video. We've been doing that 15 years. We've had people ask us, hey, can we see you when you record? And it's like, if you really want to. Uh, so it's still an audio show. That's our prime directive, just like this one. But uh, for the last two weeks, we've been doing video. And the first week I did it with OBS and it was fine. Um, but it, it's, a, you know, OBS is it's open source. It's got some limitations, as I said. And so this week, but it's I, solid, but it's solid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's solid. This week I used a a for pay app called Mimo Live, uh, M-I-M-O Live. It's from folks at uh, a company called Boinks Software. It used to be called Boinks TV, if that means anything to anyone that's listening. Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. Exactly. Right. I've been in touch with Oliver all week because he's been it's great to be able to get tech support from the CEO. Don't get me wrong. This like there's you know, it's good to be Dave. Right. Um, but uh I, I used Mimo Live this week for Mac Geek Gab, and it is it, it in many ways more powerful uh, than than OBS. And one of those ways is that it can stream limited only by your CPU and, of course, your Internet bandwidth. It can stream to multiple uh, endpoints simultaneously. So yesterday we streamed Mac Geek Gab Live both to Facebook and YouTube. It gets a little crazy because you've got commenters, you know, in both places and you're trying to record a live show and still mix a video. And so, you know, it was like talk about being on for a performance and being in it like, you know, that's. That was certainly the case, but Mimo Live worked great. What's cool about the the, the the real benefit to Mimo Live, and if you and I, Paul, were to ever do a video here, like for Gig Gab, same kind of thing, recording the audio show, but you can watch us while we do it, we would almost mm -hmm. certainly use Mimo Live. And the reason is OBS requires some third party software to bring in a remote participant. Right. So we would have to probably use Skype because there's sort of a direct path between OBS and Skype, but it does require Skype. And then there's the extra load of running Skype and doing all of the video compression and decompression sort of one extra time because of of the way Skype is. Mimo Live has its own video conferencing platform built in. So I would just give you a URL. You would visit that URL in your web browser. And now you are now just a video source and an audio source inside of uh, Mimo Live, and it can be placed exactly. You don't have to do any weirdness with screen capture or any of that wonkiness. So, um, so they've, you know, that there is that. Unfortunately, we haven't found any, and I don't know that we will find any uh, video conferencing software where there's no latency because that that almost doesn't exist. Uh, in order to be able to like play a song in sync with each other. Uh, but, uh, can but, I ask you a question before we go off of that? Yeah, sure. There have been a few things that have, there have been a few things that have popped up on, on the internet lately that are virtual groups that are in perfect sync. Any idea how they're doing that? Yeah, um, There's two on my website. Now there are two that are choirs. Yeah. There are, um, I've seen a few bands put some things up, but I can't figure out what the tech is to do it. Well, see, I think a lot of folks are doing what you've done for the house rockers where they're recording their tracks and then somebody's assembling them. Um, there is a piece of software called Jamulus that I found uh, J A M U L U S. And there might be another, I'll put a link to this in the show notes. Uh, Jamulus is built to do exactly this. It's, you know, they say it's software that enables musicians to perform real time jam sessions over the Internet. There's no video with Jamulus. And what you do is you set up a server. You either connect to one of these sort of open. It's all open source. So Jamulus is available for free. You can connect to a server that someone else is running or you can easily run your own Jamulus server on your computer, which I would recommend because then at least one person is local to the server. Um, 
and then you connect the client to your server. You plug in your audio device and you can hear what's happening and mix, you know, what you're hearing from from other folks. We haven't messed with it with with Fling yet. Uh, we've all I, I set up a Jamulus server and we all have connected at different times and kind of gotten our setups right. We this week we plan to, you know, see if it's going to work. Um, hmm. But but that would I, I don't know uh, if somebody out there knows feedback at giggabpodcast.com, please, because obviously if there's some something we're missing here. I want to know about it uh, for Definitely. all the obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will share one thing though. And you might find this helpful, Paul, especially for your live show. You know, your computer probably has a camera in it. Your phone also has a camera in it. Uh, if you're going to be using OBS, Mimo Live, of course, there's an app that will allow you to use your phone as a secondary camera source. So you don't have to buy anything extra there. Um, OBS also has an app at obs.camera. It's a third party thing, but it does the exact same thing. It lets you use your phone, uh, in this case, an iPhone, to add a second camera source. So you could have maybe, you know, a, a wider view on you and your guitar and then maybe something just on either your and face. Or how just does it connect? It, it's a it uses you have to be on the same Wi-Fi for it to to throw it from the ca the phone into a studio? Um, I, I, you know, I've dug into a couple of these. I'm pretty sure you want to do a USB connection for this, just so you're not dealing with the additional lag of, of Wi-Fi, right? How do you so, do USB from your phone? Oh, you plug your light, like for an iPhone, if it's got a lightning port on it, uh, your charging cable is USB on one end and lightning on the got other. It. So you just plug that, that USB cable right into your, into your Mac or your PC and then, and then you're good to go. So, yeah, it okay. just turns your phone into a second camera, which, again, you know, we were saying last week, as you add more elements to this and increase the production quality, uh, you know, that ups your game compared to everybody else. So, you know, it's worth spending some time experimenting and you've probably got some time. And so, you know, well, you go. I, I just want to pause for a second as yeah. you're going through this, tech, you just kind of reflect. It's interesting to me that. You know, some of these have been incredibly effective with just the iPhone's camera and microphone. Yeah. You know, some of it has a, a folksy, spontaneous quality to it that's very effective for the mood that it's communicating. Um, there's a guy who's local here who I just think he's awesome. He's a total pro. His name is Clay Bell. Great player, great singer. And um, Clay clearly has taken some time and set up a bit of studio. He has like a nice drape behind him and some candles and some lighting. And it's very pro. It, it, it's beautiful. It's really effective. And I, I encourage people to take a look at another way to do it. That's just kind of different from the a guy sitting in his living room. Cause that's what we're all doing sitting in our living room. And I don't say one is right or one is wrong. Sure. They're different moves that you're trying to create. Again, it's still your brand. Certainly there are international superstars that are doing these things from you know, in front of the mixing console in their home or, you know, wherever it may be. I don't, there's no right or wrong. It's really what vibe you want to create for the, you know, the mood that you want to portray. So um, I know my buddies, the Coffus brothers have done two streaming shows from their music room. You know, it's That's just awesome. A, it's just a room, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the main message is the spontaneity of it. I, I know for me, I'm, I'm interested in getting the sound right. So I, I talked to you a little bit, talked to a few other people. And for me, um, I have one of those Bose personal audio systems that I use for my acoustic shows. Okay. And there's a, I have the old mixer. They've come out with new generations of mixers since, but I of have course. an old mixer about 10 years old, but it had, it had and has a USB port. I updated the firmware in the, in the mixer, which not terribly difficult to do. And um, I started to experiment because evidently that USB port is assignable. I can take any of the, any of the four channels for the mixer, I can um, take the aux out. There's an aux out. I can take the main out um, and assign it to the USB. And then I asked my good buddy, Dave Hamilton, smartest guy I know, <laughs> how to get it out of the USB and into the phone. He said, I think you just need the Apple camera connection kit, a $39 dongle. Yep. And so it digital shouldn't, out it of the It shouldn't be $39, by the way. It should be about 12 but that's beside the point. It's $39. Apple. Bucks. Yep. It came, right. came in a white box with nice packaging. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. Anyway, you know, once I figured out the mixer and, you know, realized that each channel I had to assign to go to the aux, you know, output, yeah. um, you know, it was really pretty good. And it's just a nice and you can you can assign it to go pre fader, 
you can say the same things that are going out to the main would go out. Sure. So you get your port. reverb or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you can do it, you know, before the mains, but with the effects on it. So you can just mix it yourself and then, uh, and take the, indiv- you know, the two individual channels. And so 39 bucks, I think I'm in business. I'm going to do a show on Thursday night and, uh, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the out right from the, my Bose system right into this $39 that should be $12 dongle and that will be the sound and I'll you know get the benefit of the slight ambience you know effects that I put into the Bose for basically a monitor for myself well and you get Um, the benefit of using you know a microphone that you're used to singing into you get the processing that you're used to doing for your guitar and you know it like there's a huge benefit to to even just adding that and I you know I use air quotes for just because that's a huge thing now you're fortunate that your mixer already you already had a USB uh, interface. It all, it happens to be built into your mixer that you use live, but right, right. you know, right. But a lot of us have USB interfaces that are intentional, like just built for the computer. But if you don't have one of those, do what Paul did, take a look at your mixers that you would use live and see, um, not everything, but as you were pointing out in pre-show, you know, a lot of things in the past 10 years, that have come out just sort of have this as, as you know, well, it's just a throw in feature. Well, it turns out it's a pretty good feature to have. So check it yeah. out. Yeah. See if it's got it. And, um, and yeah. And then you can kind of start to pull this stuff together. Um, there's, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest a, another piece of software. You don't need it for what you're doing, but for folks out there, if you wind up having multiple audio devices, like multiple interfaces that you need to sort of pull together or do different things with on your Mac, um, and and if you're using OBS, this this becomes another level, and it's this is possible to do in Windows too. Um, usually, these pieces of of software, you know, OBS and Mimo Live and any of the others, will let you pull in from. Uh, what the computer sees as a physical audio interface. So that might be the built in microphone in your thing. It might be a USB thing that you've plugged in, you know, because you've got it in your mixer Uh, and, and they'll let you grab those and it's fine and it works out great. And that's what you'll do Paul with, with OBS, I would assume is you just, you know, point it at that USB device and you're good Mm -hmm. to go. Well, if you have, for example, an app on your computer, that's going to be playing backing tracks, That app can play through your speakers, but there's no way to tell your computer, as far as the operating system is concerned, there's no way to say point at that as an audio device, right? Because it's not an audio device. It's just an app playing music. Well, good news. There's a couple pieces of software that you can use to pull all that together on the Mac. There's two of them. One is called Audio Hijack and the other is Loopback. They're both made by a company uh, named Rogue Amoeba. And it's for doing exactly this kind of thing. Now, we use Audio Hijack. We've been using it for, well, five years here because we've been doing the show for five years. It's how we record the podcast. But it allows you to grab a source. And Loopback is probably all you folks need. But it's, you know, it's worth uh, it's worth knowing about both. So I just wanted to mention both. But you get to grab a source and uh, and that source can be a running application it can be an audio device if you want to route it differently. And and what you're doing is creating with Loopback in particular, you're creating an audio device. It's a virtual device, but your computer doesn't know any better. It registers just like it would register when you plug in a USB port or whatever. And now you've got that app that's playing your backing tracks able to pull in to OBS. So Loopback, I'll put Audio Hijack in the notes too, but Loopback is really the key thing. And I know there's an app for Windows and it it is not coming to me as I'm talking. I was hoping as I vamped long enough, the name of it would would ring. So hopefully one of you will will send it into feedback at gigabpodcast.com. We can tell people about it. But Loopbacks would, would be awesome if you've got like backing tracks or whatever. And if you if you aren't already set up to, you know, play them through your mixer, which would would then get them in anyway kind of thing. So I just throw it out there. I like the, you know, it's it's, it's geeky it's stuff. You. It's me. It's yeah. Yeah. But it lets us do what yeah. we do, which is, you know. The more we can feel like we get to do what we do uh, right now, at least for me, the better. So, well, we're hanging on to normal for now, whatever (laughs) we can make a normal. That's what I'm saying. I I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I know um, my buddy Steve and Peter Felice did a live show 
Um, a lot of, I think I was saying last week's show, they're doing them as benefits to help some of the venues that they're, mm. that they're are loyal with. And so I think that's great. Mary Ellen and Tom have done a couple beautiful shows. Simon's done seven or eight shows. I, mean, I know. He's the dude's busting. prolific. Yeah, it's great. It, well, he's, he's determined. He's going to figure out how to make his life continue on. And I think it's just great. Well, and that's it. Adding, you know, dozens of songs. Yep. Clay, who I mentioned a while ago, I'd love to put a link to him in the show notes. So Clay, you know, he's a full on pro and he's, he's just wonderful. Um, his, his shows are um, largely request shows. And I, I'm not sure if he's pre-recording or if he's doing everything live, but what you get is actually a pretty nice product. I mean, when you watch his stuff, it's very soothing. Like I said, the, the style that he's produced, it is really cool. That's good. So cool. Yeah. yeah your, so. your friend, Peter Felice put a great post in our gig gab uh, Facebook group today at, uh, giggabpodcast.com slash Facebook at, about all of kind of the things that he's learned. He, he sort of riffs on some of the things we were saying in the last episode about how, um, you know, how you have to it, how it is worth thinking about different elements of, of your performance. Now that it's a different performance, one of the mm. things he throws out there and it's worth, I'm not going to read his whole post, but I, I'll put a link to it in the show notes so you can find it or just go to the, the gig gab uh, Facebook group. But um, he, one of the things he said, in addition to taking the time to set up your quote unquote studio to ensure that, you know, you've got a good video image and all of your tech is working and you're not having issues and that sort of thing. Um, in addition to that, he says it helps if you have a director to run the tech uh, and and, you know, of course, it would have to be somebody that lives in your house with you. So he says his wife uh, is able to do it for him. And, and really, it, it, you know, it, it's kind of a fun thing because once you get like this OBS or Mimo Live set up, you know, switching between the views that you've created, you start to feel like a TV producer and that can be, you know, it's fun. It's a, it's something to do. So can be creative with it. So um, I like it. All right. I think I oh, just I would one last thought. I just yeah. I send a lot of love and respect and appreciation out to all musicians who are doing this. It is helping keep people sane and normal in these weird times. I'm sure it's helping keep the musicians sane and normal in these weird times just to be able to express a little bit. But I it you know, this is a weird, weird thing oh, yeah. globally that we're going through, right? And people are finding ways to beauty in amidst this and there is something remarkable about about how humankind is kind of responding to this. I mean, largely, you know, art means new things again. Connections and relationships and friendships and love mean mean something different again. Family means, you know, more. I mean, obviously, family always yeah. means the most. But I mean, the the reaction that amplified. I hear, yeah. everything. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Dave. It's it's uh, things take on new meaning when there's this great uncertainty that are is hovering outside the door. I texted and Johnny D the other day. Uh, he's the singer in monkey fist and he knows how I feel like on gig day. If you call me at three o'clock and tell me the gigs canceled, that's like the happiest phone call I could ever get. Right. Because it's like, Oh, I get like the bonus evening off. I texted him the other day and I don't have it in front of me. I forget exactly how I worded it, but it was something. I don't like, ever want that call again. Right? Of, yeah. You know, I wonder how I'm going to feel about this in the, how long it's going to take me if ever to get back to that point of being happy at three o'clock when a gig is canceled, you know, I, I, I it, and he's like, well, yeah, he's like same. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So I, I, uh, I mentioned earlier in the show that I, I finally got back to tracking and I, I want to send a shout out to my fling bandmates for a thank you to my fling bandmates for two reasons. Number one, for waiting the two weeks for me to get back on my uh, feet with it. And also for being very encouraging as I started to realize, you know, why I wasn't recording and, and that sort of thing. So they, they're awesome people and, and, and all that. But secondly, I want to thank them for permitting me to share snippets of a song that is very rough in form. It's a great song though. Uh, and certainly unreleased as of yet. And so I'm only going to be sharing like 20 second snippets here. But when we did have the opportunity with all five of us in the studio here to play a very early kind of version of this song through uh, Aaron was even able to make it for our our most recent rehearsal. I don't want to say our last rehearsal, but our most recent rehearsal. Uh, and obviously we've been delaying scheduling another one for all the obvious reasons. But uh, but we were able to play it through and I, you know, I was trying to play around with a groove, which is never an easy thing to do 
amongst people, right? It, it's always like find an easy common denominator and stick with it so that somebody else can work on something. And then if I don't think to come back around to it, the song just winds up with, a you know, kind of a boring drum part. It, boring isn't necessarily bad. Right. There's a lot of songs with with what I would Ooh. call boring drum parts that are amazing songs. And you got to play a part that that suits the song. But with a little intention, you can find uh, an interesting part that suits the song. So for some reason, I had it in my head, Paul. The song is called Saturday Tomorrow, and I think the name will stick and uh, I can't imagine it won't. But um, for some reason, I had it in my head at first listen through that a shuffle would work on this thing. So when I sat down on on Saturday to re- finally record again, I started playing this shuffle thing and I'll, I'll play it here. Hopefully the, the audio, you know, c- compression that we use for the show doesn't completely ruin this, but I'll, I'll just play. And I've, the drums are over mixed on this. So you can hear the drum part, but hopefully you hear everything and I'll play this and then, uh, and then I'll, and well, and then we'll go on with the story here. So, uh, oh, oh wrong mix. Here we go. Okay, so it's like that double shuffle kind of thing, and it sort of worked, but I don't know. It just wasn't, it didn't feel right. Okay, mm. and I was listening to, it, the the song starts without drums. I mean, that worked. That that seemed okay as we were listening to it here, to, to be perfectly honest. But as I was listening to the intro of the song, waiting to come in on my next take around, my, my process is I just keep playing the song a few times. And get something together and then sort of assemble a drum track from that. Or maybe I'll get one take that works, but I'm not obsessed with, with that these days. It's just like, you know, record a bunch of them, stitch them together. It's all good. And as I, as I was waiting, I noticed that Russ had, thankfully, these Aaron and Russ had been working on this for the last two weeks. Um, and Russ had added this up, like offbeat guitar on the end of every beat. Just a strum of an acoustic guitar in the intro where I don't play. And so that's this. You can kind of hear it in the... It's opposite channel. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I can hear it. It's barely there. It's barely there, but it's just on the upbeats. And I heard it in the headphones. It's one of those things that he's mixed way back, um, but it's there. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I wonder if I need to stay straight with the eighths and maybe like turn it into this, you know, kind of loping thing and and just go with that. So I just went with it. And here's this different drum part. So I'll play the, the first one here um, is this. Right. And then mm-hmm. after hearing that, I played this. And then mixed appropriately, you get this. Kind of has a Genesis feel. But just that pulsing of the eighth note kind of threw it. That's that's sort of the, and and it's and I was like I finished that that take of it and I was like I don't know. And I, I'm like, this seems interesting. It's different than what I thought it should be, but I don't know what you guys think. And I sent it to to the guys, you know, I put it in our, our process. We use Trello and Dropbox all linked together. And so I put it into the system, just the, the drum track. And, and immediately I started getting texts from Russ and Aaron saying, oh, you figured it out. Okay, great. Yeah. Like, we, yes, perfect. They're like, you know, like, that's perfect. You don't need to do anything else. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I've played it once that way. And I wasn't even planning on it. it like, I decided it before I played the intro fill that I was going to try this. Like, I, give me a chance. Let me see if I can make it a little better, you know, and jazz it up a little bit. But um, and maybe. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, trust the muse. Right. And And sort of the beauty of this. I don't know if we were in our normal flow of things, I don't know that I would have given myself the time, the freedom uh, to be creative and experimental and just trying different things like this. 
Um, so, you know, there's 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 some good that's coming of this, you know, isolation thing and and the gift of of time. Well, you were. literally have nothing but time. Right. I mean, you, you're running your business ostensibly yeah. still. And so your yeah. life is not as different as others. But literally, it, I lost track of days a couple of days ago. I would like oh, yeah. Saturday today. You know, it can spend two and a half, three weeks. My wife and I have been here and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting a little weird, but I yeah. do have time. And so my hands are on my guitar for a lot of hours every day, yeah. getting to play with some tech, you know, the, there's, there's an upside to that, that I probably will never have that opportunity again. No. to just dive I, into stuff that I want to dive into. I am forcing myself now. Now this is only day three of this new thing. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I am forcing myself to play my drums for an hour a day. And it, it might be this. It might be it, our our guitar player, Mike, uh, was telling me, I don't know, a few months ago how he just goes on YouTube and finds drum grooves. I guess you can do this on YouTube. I don't search for them because I, I you know, I can create them. Um, <laughs> but but he finds like these drum grooves that exist there that are essentially built for songwriters to use, you know, as inspiration. Right. Like, here's a groove. Come up with something to play over it. You know, go. And that Mike, our, one of our guitar players in Fling, has been writing songs uh, that way, evidently, for a very long time. And so yesterday, as I got in here, I, you know, started playing around. I, I queued up Saturday tomorrow on the on Logic and was sitting down. I was about to hit the big red button and play a take. But I was just started warming up. And as I always do when I warm up, I wind up or often, not always, but often I, you know, I found myself in like playing variations on a kind of a physical theme that that wound up in different grooves it was this open-handed kind of thing that i was just trying to you know get some coordination going get the blood flowing and uh and just playing it at different tempos different time signatures you know it might have been a shuffle once it might have been a, a funk thing once but just hands in the same place this open thing with like driven by the bass drum or whatever and i thought wait a minute i should record this for mike and so I did. I came out, I set up a new session for, you know, so I wasn't overwriting our, our lovely co uh, composition of Saturday tomorrow and and just played for, I don't know, 15 minutes. And I just sent it all to Mike and was like, throw it out if you want. I don't you know, I thought maybe this might be interesting. And, you know, he wrote back a couple hours later. He's like, oh, I already have some ideas. Next time, would you mind trying maybe some Zydeco grooves or, you know, some African things? He's like, I have these different ideas, but I don't have a drum groove to go with it. And it's like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, yeah. You just you just gave me inspiration to practice, you know, today, tomorrow, Wednesday. And now I can I can do it. So so there there I hope that these particular habits with relation to playing my drums. I I've now finally got a really good, easy setup. I can walk in here, flip a couple of switches and be recording within a few minutes. It's not a, you know, the mics are all set up. The interface is set up. The computer's ready to go. I, I have a workflow that's simple. I've, I've, I've gotten much more comfortable with logic again. You know, I'd sort of for, lost my chops with it. Kind of, I was reminded when you were saying iMovie, it was like, oh, I feel the same way with logic. Like I've finally gone back three or four years and yeah. I know how to do this again. Like it, it works in my fingers. I don't have to think with my head as much. So yeah, it's good. If anybody wants to hear uh, the house rockers, uh, one of the really great local sound guys, in this town, his name's Mike O'Brien. He's actually the sound guy for the San Jose Sharks, amongst many other things that he does. But um, he mixed us uh, at a Fourth of July show a couple of years ago, and he took a direct out from the board um, mixed. I mean, well, it was just a direct out; it's not post mixed. And uh, he he posts. He's been posting various bands that he's been mixing. So, sure. in addition yeah. to musicians that are that are posting stuff, there's been a lot of music fans that have been going through their archives and posting some things. Mike, a pro sound guy, was posting some of the things that he recorded, and um, it's a good example of. Um, the difference between studio stuff and live stuff, it's a great mix, except when the vocalists get on or off their mic. And you can actually hear, you know, you can actually hear it gets louder and, you know, then all of a sudden it disappears a little bit, yeah. me largely. Um, and it's just a really good example of what's possible with live mixing and what you can do with that. And the reason I bring this up is, you know, I'm thinking about of the creative projects I want to do. I, I would definitely want to do a new promo video for the House Rockers, mm. another good show topic, you know, how to approach those things. Um, and, you know, the thought of doing pre-recorded -record audio and going to the expense of going into a studio, you know, the setup time, kind of the tedious nature of that stuff. And given that people don't 
you know, just use audio. Everybody wants video now. I mean, I just think promo packs are video packs, not Absolutely. audio packs. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of guys in our band are advocating for just let's get a great live recording and, and, um, listening to that, which is, uh, is one of the best ones I've heard of us. Um, uh, just reminds me that there's a certain discipline to playing live that you need to get a track that you can use. Uh, you can probably do it chops wise. And I think I'm sure you can do it, you know, no mistakes wise, but I just think, uh, there's a good lesson in there. Yeah. Uh, and so if anybody wants to hear what the house rockers sound like, you know, you know, fully mixed, uh, you can go to the house rockers, Facebook page and check it out. But there's a, a right. post I shared from Mike O'Brien. Cool. All right. Okay. I will put that uh, in here somewhere. Mike O'Brien on the house rockers. All right. Cool. So I got two, two, two streaming events this week. Let's put them. If you don't mind, put them in the show notes. I'd love to have some, um, some listeners, especially on my Thursday night, you know, solo thing, say hi to some people. And uh, are you going to do anything? You going to do a drum lesson. You going to do anything. I don't know. I, you know, I've, I have obviously spent a lot of time working on a live streaming setup, which I, I've applied to, you know, the Mac Geek Gab podcast. I certainly have the tech and now the know-how to make this all happen musically. I don't know what I would do, though. Um, I, I, yeah, I should do something. I mean, I might as well. There's there's nothing else to do. Right. So um, I'd love to see you deconstruct some of your favorite favorite drummers and you know oh, what they're doing i think that'd be really interesting oh yeah i mean even even if you have the the fortitude to do some of the perch stuff you love yeah yeah that'd yeah. be great oh yeah yeah all Not right people could do that either maybe i need to i might need some liquid courage for that to do that live but. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, you got that, right? I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, in New Hampshire, you're not you're not allowed to play a gig uh, and have beer on stage, but I'm pretty sure they're not oh. going to come here and shut me down. So it's good. All right. Well, <laughs> listeners, send all liquid courage to Dave Hamilton, care of Gig Gab podcast. Well, I can't play all that well under the liquid courage. So, <laughs> you know, it's going to have to be just one of those things where I just get over it. Like, really, it's I got to get over myself. But um, but there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I like this idea. All right. Well, the, the last thing I need, though, is to start a video stream and have people say, start requesting, like, play this drum part or play that drum part. I mean, it could be really fun and interesting for a lot of people. It may not be as fun and interesting for me, <laughs> but mm. uh, but it could be. I Actually, that that would be, that's it. That would be, um, I don't you know. You can how, pioneer the concept of drummer requests. Drummer requests. Yeah. Yeah. The only people that would want to hear that are other drummers, though, or people that are, you know, very well versed in the drums. And now I, you know, it's like playing a gig and you look out and, you know, the the drummer from one of your other favorite local bands is sitting right there in the crowd. And you're like, oh, crap. Now I can't mm. stop. I, I my as I was saying that I was remembering this one gig it was a charity gig we played. I don't know, 14 years ago. It was right after we moved here to New Hampshire. It was this charity gig. We were playing with two bands. And I think I was using this other, we brought the sound gear. They brought backline gear or something. I was using this other guy's drum set, but he played the same brand of drums as me, these Eames drums, which are all custom. Uh, Joe McSweeney had made, made both kits. And, but in his kit was, you know, he had, he had customized this kit very similar to the way I'd customized mine. So it was fairly comfortable kit to play. And we're in the and for some reason earlier in the night, you know, as drummers do, we're always talking about, you know, as we're setting up and doing things, we're talking about our some of our favorite drummers. Of course, Peart came up and, uh, you know, we're talking about David Garibaldi and and uh, Steve Gadd and, and, you know, all these, all these you know, the drummers that the drummers talk about. It's, it's just how it goes. And we're in the middle of the gig and it was just a three piece. So everything's exposed, but it's the sound was good. Everything it was just great. It was going really well. And Jack, our bass player, turns to me. He's like. Let's play that that tune. He's like, um, he's like, you know, I'm like, Jack, I have no idea because you, you just said like five words to me, which could describe every song ever written. He's like, yeah, no, you know, that thing, you know, the drum part. You got to know the drum part for this one. I'm like, Jack, maybe w what song, you know, and he's like that, that, that Paul Simon thing. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know that 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 fifty ways. I'm like, I knew what you meant. Now, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I had never played that song live before that moment. Uh, I had messed around with the drum groove as many drummers have in the privacy uh, and 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 safety and seclusion of my own studio. But it was like, here I am 
that guy and I were literally just talking about this groove, you know, and uh, and now it's time. Like, you know, we, we had this conversation in the microphone, so there was no bailing out. I was like, all right, here we go. And so so we did it. But it was one of those things that was just like, man, seriously, just like that. I don't get any warning. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Instant still, gad, add water, instant I, gad. The instant gad. I still play it wrong. I, I I learned it wrong. I learned it without ever having seen Gad do it. And and he does this open handed thing that uh, uh, it's I, almost unconscious. It's like he's emoting something from another planet. I mean, it's just kind of it's a left hand it, lead weird thing. It's it's so de- it's deconstructed in the moment. I don't even. Yeah, I've I love it. I've it's I've, all feel. Yeah, kind no. There's a ton of technique. It was no, but I mean, from him, he's yeah. just emoting. He's just emoting the vibe that he felt. Well, you can see it when he plays it. Yeah, yeah, but but that's not how the the part was created. He created the part as a as a uh, a technical exercise, right? Mm. I mean, it, it was very much. That. Yeah, no, it was very much a, a, a technical exercise, an independence exercise. Because holy crap, it it like it touches on all of it uh, when you play it the right way, his way. Uh, and and he created it as a as a warm up to kind of get his body and his mind in sync, right? And you know, I, I we all uh, many drummers have their own things. A, a simple one is a bossa nova, right? Because you can add a lot of stuff to it. You can get the hi hat moving up and down, and uh, and it's a good way to like check in with your body and see, okay, like are things doing the weird things that they're supposed to do and all of that. And so that was his like you know bossa on steroids, and. Uh, and Paul Simon heard him warming up this way and just started playing chords over it and wrote a song. And he's like, yeah, you just play that groove. You're good. You know, and mm. uh, and that was it. So so now it's it's a very comfortable thing for him. But it was most definitely written to be a, a technical challenge, first and foremost, as I understand it. So, yeah, there you go. But that's how a lot of things are. Yeah, that's that's the entirety of. John Fishman's uh, body of work with the band Fish is like, I, I don't want to say the entirety, but like 90% of his drum parts are what I would call independence exercises that he just like would play for hours and Trey would be in the, the next room because they lived in a house and Trey couldn't not hear the drums. And so he would just like write songs around these, you know, these things. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you know, so now I started doing that with Mike, I guess, right? Sending him some of my <laughs> crazy right. drum parts. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even realize that until just now. That's right. Yeah. Hey, last right. question: Who gets final? Who gets final choice on the part when you create a part? If the if the if the band majority is a bigger vote than you individually for what what part what vibe you want to put on it, how do you resolve that? Um, usually go with the the band leaning towards the songwriter, but not always. Um, you know, it there there have been well. One of my favorite examples is a song called Running Down that was actually a big, fairly big hit for us on college radio with my college band called Go Figure. I wrote the song. Uh, it's one of the only songs I've ever written, uh, really. And, and it wound up being a thing where we all sort of, well, many of us contributed. My brother really helped write the song once I had the initial idea. And then our singer, Jeff, brought in um, some a couple of additional lyrics, which really sort of framed the thing out. And it was great. Uh, but... The uh, I had this idea in my head. The whole reason that I wrote this song is I had this idea in my head for a drum part and I get to rehearsal and we're messing with the song and the guys are like, this is a great tune. We were like a week and a half from going in the studio too. it. It was just the good timing. And uh, and our guitar player said to me, my our other guitar player, not my brother, uh, said to me, he was also a drummer. Great, great drummer, great guitar player. And he's like, yeah, that drum part, though, he's like, you really need to, like, play it a little more straight and and do this with it. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, my whole inspiration for this song was was this other drum part that I had in my head. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't think it's going to cut it, you know. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it the other way. And I tried it the other way. And I was like, oh, shoot, he's right. You know, <laughs> so sometimes even on your own songs, you don't get to play the drum part you thought you wanted to play. <laughs> But mm-hmm. it's it, you kind of have to be objective about it. That's the hard part for me. And I would imagine, uh, you know, many people is when, you know, you come up with something, I come up with something and, it, you know, I, I get emotionally attached to it for some reason. Like, you know, it's got some cool little thing that, that makes me smile or it's a difficult thing to play and I've mastered it or semi mastered it or whatever. And then, you know, having that conversation of 
do we as a band think that's the best part for this song and taking myself out of it? I mean, it's it's very difficult to do. And I, you know, don't always succeed. But that's the goal is, you know, saying, okay, what's the best thing for this song? Not the best thing for Dave, not the best thing for Mike, not the best thing for, you know, like, let's let's look at this song as a song. And uh, yeah, you know. And and it helps to be reminded of scenarios where, you know, I've suggested something to somebody else that changes their part and they do it and it serves the song well. And it's like, OK, you know, this is a like this only works if we're all in it with the same goal. So that's the trick is trying to really it's not about which person to listen to. It's who who is actually it. Maybe it's who is driving the it serves the song best bus you know, um, and, and follow that person or at least get on board and, you know, try and steer. I don't know. That's, yeah, that's, that's all I have. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Same. Um, Hi, Dave. I want to throw one last thing out there very quickly. Yeah. Uh, band Zoogle is they were, they, they are not a sponsor. They were a sponsor. They are the place where you host your website. Uh, but they, you know, there, there have been, I think it was, um, Oh, where what Bandcamp did like 24 hours commission free or something uh, last weekend, which was great, you know, and like lots of sales came in. We had a uh, bitter pill. They they use Bandcamp for all their stuff. Uh, and it was great to have 24 hours of non commission. Bandzoogle is n- no commission on their sales all the time because the, the, you just pay for your website and all of that. And they sent out mm-hmm. a note kind of reminding people of that. And I thought that that was a good thing. If you know, if you're really looking yeah. to sell stuff, just think about the business model and how much you're giving away and all that stuff. So just throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, adapting to these crazy times, That's I was it. saying Simon does his online busking and it's helping and yeah. other people are finding ways to you know keep commerce going. And I find people are remarkably generous. They, um, I find music fans are, are stepping up as much as the musicians are and trying to support yeah. the artists that they love. So, you know, use these tools that are out there, guys. For sure. All right, man. Well, we've we've totally blown past our maybe we'll do we'll do 30 minutes, maybe 40 because we just tapped 50. Uh, I know that's not that's not new for us, but it is, you know, you got somewhere you got to be. No, that's the thing. See. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much for listening. We will uh, we'll see you next week. Come check us out, you know, our Facebook group, and uh, we'll link to all the live stuff and, and all that uh, because it's good, you know. We'll go watch Paul this week, and then maybe next week yeah. Paul will convince me to put something out there. Do it. Uh, we'll see. I, will, I promise to always be performing. Yeah, that's the idea. That's right. 